decided to watch Amara La Negra on The Breakfast Club because I love her, she's adorable, but I almost turned it off after about a minute in because of this. So, what are you? Huh? Like race wise. Oh, okay. What, what am I? <laughs> yeah, like, what are you? No, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm Dominican. Well, born and raised in Miami. My parents okay. are Dominican, and um, I am obviously an Afro Latina. Mm -hmm. So, yes. That turned so, into a so huge both your parents deal. are Dominican? Yes, both okay. of my parents are Dominican. Right. My mom still do not know no English a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on that. So, what is an Afro Latino? I thought, I thought that was half black. Half something else. That's what I thought it was too. Half I thought it was Latino. half black, half Latino. Well, really? You're gonna look a black woman in her eyes and ask her what race she is? And in 2018, are we for real asking what an Afro Latina is? So no one knew Amara was coming. No one wanted to do a quick Google search on the transatlantic slave trade or triangular trade routes before she stepped in the building. Okay. I stayed for Amara, but I already knew what it was gonna be. Now, I didn't get upset until Amara started to talk about colorism, which is a foundational element of the structural inequality that black folks face, right? Not according to Envy and Charlemagne. They'll always pick the lighter, you know, they'll always pick the ones that look like I said before, like JLo's and Shakira's and stuff before they look at us. Who cares if you're talented? Who cares if you're educated? You know, you're always going to be the last option. And that's that just, so it's just a symbol of beauty. I don't, I don't it's, see that. Like, I mean, yes. And I'm, I guess I'm uptown a lot. I'm in New York. But, but you don't see it where? I don't even see it I in mean, Hollywood no more. I feel like that. I feel like times have changed a lot. Uh, okay, but the same thing I, I go back to. For the most part, I'm coming from the Latin market okay. into the American, mm -hmm. and this is the struggles that we have. Right? You can say you, sure you it's don't. Not in your mind. We it's not because on it's not because you yeah, can't. That's love and hip hop. That's a storyline. And who the fuck is but young it's, Hollywood? But it's a true. Like, but it's a true. <laughs> yeah, but it's a true storyline. Like it's not even. We didn't have to fake it because it's the truth. Are you serious? Now, a part of me thinks that this exchange is so absurd as to be hilarious. But another part of me thinks it's genuinely sad that black women still have to tell black men to one listen to us when we're talking about our experiences and two acquaint themselves with the most basic facts about black history. I wanted to jump out of my skin while watching Amara try to explain to these men the real discrimination she faces as a dark-skinned Afro-Latina while they are telling her that it's all in her head. That is exactly what white folks do to black people. If you don't think colorism is real, then turn on Univision, turn on Telemundo. Count how many dark-skinned people you see. If it's not a real thing, then why can't Charlemagne or Envy name other Afro-Latinas? Why was the notion that somebody can be both black and Latina so strange. They literally proved Amara's point with those opening questions where they talk to her like she's an alien. And we gotta talk about the gender dynamics here because Amara is animated and gorgeous, but she was trying to convey a really important message. Scholars study this. Those who've been affected have talked about it countless times, but these men were so condescending and disrespectful. You're just not gonna convince me that gender had nothing to do with these men talking over her and Angela while they were trying to explain how European and beauty standards impact black women, especially not when Jermaine Dupri was on the show last week and talked about how hard it is for dark-skinned black women in music. The dark-skinned female singer still is having a hard time in the music business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's still out here. Right. And however people want to look at it, whatever they want to say, that's still, you know, it's not the thing that people jump across the table immediately when they see a dark-skinned girl. When I had Dundria, it was like, mm. She can sing, but you know, Escape was called ugly for 10 years. That's colorism. But why was there no pushback when he talked? What could be different about Amara and Jermaine? I wonder what it could be. Now, of course, I have to emphasize that colorism is not just about entertainment and representation. Dark-skinned people are oppressed globally. They have lower wages, they get less wealth, they get longer prison sentences, they live shorter lives. But that's not what we're talking about right now, and I've already explored that elsewhere. What this really underscores for me is the importance of seeking knowledge. Y'all, if you love your people, learn about your people. Take some time to read and listen and learn what's going on in the world. Develop some curiosity outside of your own experiences. Nobody knows everything. We all start from different places. But one way we show care is by showing up to these conversations prepared. And even after you've done that, you still might wanna know more. That's when you listen for understanding. In Amara's case, it's not fair for her to show up to these places and be assaulted by willful ignorance from her own people. Not when she's dealing with people who have the resources to know and do better. The smartest and most loving thing you can do is concede when 
when you don't have the range. Be prepared to ask the right questions. Take a step back, shut up when appropriate. Otherwise, you'll be out here looking foolish like Charlemagne and Envy. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and check out all of the resources linked below. See you next time.